So whenever we are starting a new topic, it's always quite nice to uh, have a real world motivating example uh, to introduce the topic and to sort of make students feel uh, connected uh, with, with what you're trying to teach them. <coughs> so this uh, video is going to talk about the addition of fractions. And let, let's give uh, you know, a real world example. So when I go to school, right, I might take an apple with me. Okay? And on day one, I'm not so hungry before lunch, so I eat only one third of the apple. I don't eat so much for lunch, so I'm a little hungry and after lunch I have one half of the apple. Okay. On day two, right, I'm slightly hungry before lunch, so I go ahead and eat half the apple. And then I have a decent lunch and sometime after lunch, because I'm not so hungry, I eat uh, one quarter of the apple. Okay. So now if I were to pose the following question. How much of the apple did I eat on day one? And how much of the apple did I eat on day two? And can I represent the amount of apple, right, that I ate on day one as a single fraction? And similarly, the amount of apple that I ate on day two as a single fraction, that essentially amounts to the addition of fractions. And we'll go ahead and see how we can actually uh, work the algebra of this out. Okay, so let's look at uh, the case of day one. Yeah, uh, in day one, what basically happened was that uh, you have one third of the apple before lunch, and then you have one half of the apple uh, after lunch. So let's uh, get a visual feel of this. So let's actually uh, draw an apple. Okay. Uh, my drawing out of an apple isn't great. Uh, well, let's just assume that's an apple. And so essentially what we've got is that uh, before lunch, I've had uh, one third of the apple. So let's assume that that is approximately one third of the apple. And then after lunch, I had uh, one half of the apple. So that is roughly one half. So before lunch, I had one third of the apple and after lunch, I had half of an apple. So what we do now is let's take the apple and break it up into six equal parts, which is approximately that. And let's label these parts. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So before lunch, I had one third. So I shade the equivalent area, which is that. Okay. After lunch, I have had one half of the apple. So I shade that area. So essentially what I've done is one third is two of the total six pieces. So I write down two divided by six. So these two pieces are two of six pieces. And this shaded region here is essentially one, two, three of the total six pieces. So that is three divided by six. So that is just two plus three divided by six, which is five divided by six. So essentially what happens here is that on day one, I have eaten five sixths of the whole apple. Okay, so let's look at the situation on uh, day number two. So what we have in day number two is that uh, I was fairly hungry before lunch. So I had half the apple, right? I had half the apple uh, before lunch. And then I had a reasonably sized lunch. So after lunch, I was not so hungry. And then I only had a quarter of the apple after lunch. So let's go ahead and uh, draw our apple. Uh, my diagram of an apple, of course, isn't great. Um, but what we've done is that before lunch, we had half of the apple. So half the apple was eaten before lunch. And after lunch, uh, we had one fourth of the apple. 
Okay. So now if we um, actually just break it up into four pieces, then before lunch we've had two of the four pieces. So before lunch we ended up having two of the four pieces. And after lunch we had one of the four pieces. So we shared that as well. And so what we do is uh, we had one of the four pieces after lunch and then we add them up. So that gives us two plus one divided by four, which is just simply three divided by four. So essentially uh, we have had three fourths of the apple within the day, half before lunch and a quarter after lunch. Okay, so what we've essentially done is started with a real world problem. Okay. Uh, and then we constructed a visual representation uh, of that particular problem. And from there, we were able to do some analysis and some calculations in order to deduce or uh, basically get uh, the answer to the question uh, that we posed uh, from the real world. Right? So this way of sort of uh, introducing concepts uh, can be quite useful for children where you actually start with a real world problem or a real world statement. Uh, if possible, uh, show them a visual representation of it uh, and then go ahead and do the calculations uh, associated with the problem that was actually posed.